welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. In last week's episode, we ended at the south side of Preston, and this week I'm still in Preston, but now on the north side where we find the start of the M55 motorway. The M55 came about in 1958 when we saw the construction of the country's first motorway, the Preston Bypass, also known as the M6. In the late 60s, the M6 was extended further north, giving us a short motorway spur, which was junction 32A of the M6. The M6 was becoming increasingly popular with motorists, and with that, the traffic numbers were rising. It was decided that an extension of a motorway down to Blackpool was required. Using the existing spur of the M6, they bolted on a further 11 miles of motorway towards Blackpool, as well as creating a few more junctions along the way. All of the work was done by 1975, and the whole section became known as the M55. What's interesting, though, is that from Junction 1 of the M55 up to the M6 interchange, you've got one of the oldest and most original sections of motorway, and at Junction 1, that causes quite a problem. Junction 1 of the M55 is a fairly unassuming junction, but if we look closely, we can see that there's a road cutting right through the middle of the roundabout. The road sits lower than the others, and that might offer us a clue as to what the problem at Junction 1 is. The bridge and roundabout found at Junction 1 haven't really changed much since their construction in 1958, and the problem created is that the bridge is exceptionally low by modern standards, making it difficult for larger vehicles to use the junction. Later on in the 70s, when constructing the rest of the M55, they realised this problem and sought out a solution where they constructed a road and sunk it lower into the ground to increase the headroom and clearance for larger vehicles. That road is the one that we see today running through the junction, and it's still in use today. When required, HGVs can use it, along with a police escort. Up next is nearly Junction 2. It wasn't built originally and was part of a plan to see a linking motorway between the M55 and the M58. This linking motorway would have been called the M59, but it never made it off the drawing board. And that was the end of that, until that is 2019, when work started on constructing the missing Junction 2. At a cost of only £207 million, the new junction will link the M55 to the A583 via the west side of Preston. It's scheduled to open in early 2023, so now. It dives under the sea, into the world below. As we head towards Junction 3, on your right, you might notice a number of radio masts. There are four 600-foot-high transmitter towers, as well as a large selection of smaller aerials and antennas, and these are all part of the Defence High Frequency Communication Service. The site that they sit on was originally a wartime airfield, but one of five that was operated by the Royal Navy rather than the Royal Air Force. In the early 1970s, the runways were removed from the site and all of the hardcore and material was used in the construction of the M55. And it turns out that that was actually probably quite a sensible idea because in 1975, just before the motorway's opening, pilot Tim Ferguson landed his Sepcat Jaguar on the M55 right behind me a short distance from Junction 3. Throughout this series, I've come across many suggestions that some of our motorways were used for aircraft or military purposes. And whilst these ideas and stories are certainly plausible, I think they need to be taken with a pinch of salt because I've never found any real hard evidence to support these stories. And I think they are just that, stories. However, in the case of the M55, they only went and filmed the whole bloody thing, didn't they? Absolutely amazing stuff, that's Sepcat Jaguar XX109 landing on the M55, having taken off from the nearby RAF Wharton. The Sepcat Jaguar had excellent capabilities in short takeoff and landings, and this was something the MOD and RAF were keen to test. XX109 landed on the M55 using around 400 yards to stop. It was then turned around and loaded up with some of the RAF's finest cluster bombs before being sent on its way. This image shows XX109 on the motorway with its cluster bombs been fitted, and that's right underneath the bridge I'm standing on now. XX109 then used 600 yards of the M55 to take off and headed back to the nearby RAF Wharton. What a lovely jolly day out. The MOD and RAF were keen to run this test because during the Cold War sort of times, you never really knew if your airfields were going to be lasting much longer than a week. And if airfields get destroyed, the planes need somewhere to land and take off. The idea was that motorways could be used as impromptu runways, although the M55 wasn't specifically built to be a runway, it just so happens it ended up being used as one. As 
we approach Junction 4, we're driving on a section of the M55 that was built on an old railway track bed. The Preston and Wire, or Weir Railway, I don't know. The Preston and Wire Railway opened in the 1840s, but it wouldn't be until the 1900s that the Blackpool and Kirkham line was constructed. This line would have taken passengers from Kirkham directly into the middle of Blackpool, stopping at Blackpool Central Station. In the mid-1960s, things would all change with the closure of Blackpool Central Station, and by the early 70s, the railway line was also closed and then removed. Which leads us on to Junction 4, where we find normal junction things. There's not much to report here, I'm afraid. As you go past Junction 4, the M55 comes to an end and turns into the A5230. But let's just go back to that old railway for a moment. Like the M55, Yeadon Way and the A5230 are also built on the old track bed. However, in the case of Yeadon Way, it's a lot more obvious and we can see how it follows the old railway route to Blackpool South Station. And there we are then, guys. That's the M55. A shorter video than usual, perhaps, but that's just the way it is sometimes. I hope you liked the video nonetheless. If you did, there is, of course, a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That'd be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.